All right, in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to do the, um, the differential seal for a single axle 2500. I haven't done this one, um, so finally got an opportunity to be able to do one of these. So, um, thought I might have demonstrate this to you guys. I don't think it might be too difficult. We might have to open up the diff cover. We might, I don't know yet. Um, but I'll find out in a little bit. What else? Um, probably not. I don't think we probably have to open it up. We probably have to just pop that off. Um, but yeah, so this will be considered as the actual shaft seal. Um, I already took off the wheels. Those were a 22 millimeter. Or you can use 7 8 a socket. Um, lifted it up at the differential obviously put our jack stands at the tube itself just like that um and that's pretty much it all right let's go ahead and get this video started if you haven't already give it a thumbs up comment down below if you have any questions and hit that subscribe button for more upcoming videos in the future and we're going to go ahead and start this video right after the intro All right, so let's go ahead and take off our caliper. Um, I'm gonna take it off with the whole bracket. So we're gonna take off, we have one 18 millimeter right here, and then one more down below, um, which would be this guy right here under the caliper. Coming right here so you guys can see, it'll be right next to that pin. So just this one right here. Um, now, if you did want to take off the the caliper in separate pieces you could but i mean it's just a little extra step that we don't need to do usually these guys will be on there pretty tight um pretty sure they have yellow loctite on them but you have to put some oomph into it well this one not so much this guy has like 350k miles on the original brakes well he just changed them recently like a couple weeks ago but yeah, pretty sure he was. He touched these. All right, so we're gonna get our caliper. Do not, and I mean do not let this hang in the air, because if not, this caliper is pretty heavy. So we'll just let it hang right there. We don't want to let it hang on its brake line. All right, so next step is um, we got to pop off these little clips if you have them. Now, if you break these, it's not the end of the world. You're just going to get your pick and swirl these right over. This is literally meant for assembly purpose. Now... Yours, if they haven't been used or haven't been touched, they're not gonna come out that easy. They're actually gonna take a long time. They're actually gonna be a lot more tighter. You're just gonna have to spin them off. So, I mean, this one's, these ones come off easy, but literally you'll spin these right off just like that. And this is only meant for assembly purpose. If you don't have them, not the end of the world. All right, also make sure your emergency brake is off too as well. We're gonna go ahead and pop off our rotor. It's leaking a lot. That we can identify. All right, so I wanna try something before I take off the diff cover. I just wanna see if this guy will slide off. Um, I'm pretty sure this guy should slide off, but I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't think so because I watched the or I read up on the on on demand saying that I have to take it off. But this differential's not like the typical ones. It's more like the bigger ones. So we're gonna have to pop off all these bolts. They are 19 millimeter. So I know some of you guys are gonna criticize me for using a chrome socket, but my impact socket just snapped right now. And also make sure you have a, a cover to catch any excessive fluid. 
that's gonna come out. All right, so, oh, thank God we don't have to open up the differential. Oh, this is the best feeling ever. Woo, I'm happy. Um, so this literally just slides right out. This is like the dually. Um, only a little bit of fluid's gonna come out. So also, one thing I forgot to mention in this video, make sure you have about three feet of space. So you could pull out your little axle shaft, just so you're aware. Um, just want to make sure you guys are aware of that. So let's go ahead and set this aside. Obviously, differential fluid is going to be leaking out. Obviously, you got to replace your gasket. If you don't have the paper gasket, you can use silicone. That's perfectly fine. Um, so right here, up on top, we have this little clip. You are going to need your pick for this. Sorry about the camera movement. Um, so we're going to get our pick. And then this should just pop right out, just like that. There's different styles. Now there's just some that just literally get pushed in and so forth. So this one obviously has a little small ind indentation. That one goes up on top right there. Now as you're working with these, it's going to smell pretty foul. It's like the one of the scents that gives me, makes me nauseous. Next, um, we need to go ahead and get this guy right here. This is a wood roof key. Now you can use your pick, which you might really struggle, or you can go get a magnet, which I'll get right now. All right, so let's get our magnet, and then as we put this in, take off all this little dirt. It should just literally pop right out. There is no up or wrong weight on this, so no up or down. Um, all right, so next step, would be um, we need to count our threads and we're gonna go ahead and mark this. So obviously there's a few other spots that have this one. So we're just gonna mark it so we know which one was our top. And then basically this one would be, you know, our bottom pretty much. So we just need those two to line up. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because we have a certain amount of, you know, thickness that needs to go um, I mean of tightness that needs to go on now some people I remember I had another video where the guy was like hey that needs to be torqued down to like 200 foot pounds that guy's like crazy because then you're over torquing the wheel bearing these guys should literally be snugged on this should just move see that see how that moves without little effort so I mean they shouldn't be on there too tight we're gonna go ahead and count how many times this spins off but we're gonna count the thread so by me grabbing right here with a pick so that's I can get on my first thread so we got one two three four and pretty much five five threads we got to go out um, so at least I know how much to catch when we put it back in so it's gonna be five threads so if not you can spin it too so you can do as like one complete rotation that would be one then two three four and then five now that brings me back out right past that lip so i know that um so i know i counted my threads right now me by counting it so we don't confuse anybody let me get that to focus so right there as you can see we don't have no threads to count left so let me just spin that right back in place all right so right there you can see how many threads that i'm counting so Again, so one, two, three, four, and then the fifth one would be right here. Just has a little oil, but you just can't see it. And again, so I was basically counting how many times that got right there. So one, one complete rotation. So this is the second complete rotation. Three complete, four, five. So right there, so I can't grab anything. So I know that's where it should be at. So once this gets pretty much almost like ideally flush, I mean, it's probably going to spin maybe about 11 times, 13 times. So let's just count it out before it falls off. So that would be six. That would be seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So I'll have probably one off. I'll probably be at 12 where it'll fall off. Oh, no. 13. 
Okay, about 12 and a half. So just so you guys can see, that one I'm not really counting. I'm really counting on what it matches up right there. So again, um, we're going to go ahead and just pull this to the side and move it out the way. All right, so now at this point, there's nothing else here. And we are going to go ahead and pull this. Now, this should literally slide right off. Now, sometimes, and I know sometimes these guys can get stuck. Trust me, I know. So, they literally, nothing's holding them on. If you need to get, um, you can get like a slide hammer or something and then, you know, get one of those like little hook shoes or something, whatever. Um, if you could tap on it. Now, we're tapping it with a rubber mallet or maybe you might need a rubber, like a hammer. Um, or you can get a pry bar, but if you get the pry bar, you might damage your brake shoes. But if you kind of like, like softly do it, um, not too aggressive, but just, you know, very at ease. And it should just slide right off, you know. So, right here, obviously, we have our inner wheel bearing. It should have came off altogether. But as you can see, our wheel seals are already completely shot. Now, I mean, that would be a great time to check your wheel bearings. I'll go ahead and show you that. So this one should just slide right off. Again, it just hung out right there because that wheel seal is completely shot. And then this wheel seal should just slide right off. But, knowing my luck, it's actually stuck on there. Really stuck on there. Um, you can get a flathead screwdriver, or see if a pick could work. Shouldn't be on there too tight. It should just literally pop right off. Oh, man, this thing's on there. All right, let me go get a flathead. All right, so with our flathead, we're just gonna get this, and then if not, we'll probably just go right here. And this should come right off damn that sucker's being stubborn yep oh that's probably what this is what was keeping it on man this thing literally broke in pieces I feel like more broke off. Or am I just tripping? Um, I'll check out the new seal. I'm pretty sure this feels like a seal too, right here. If anything, this whole thing might be the seal. Um, and it might probably had it come out like that. I highly doubt it. But just in case, um, let me go ahead and get the new seal. I just don't know, but I mean, it seems kind of weird. All right, so let's check our outer race, or this will be our inner race. So you need to inspect this, see if you see any wears. Like if you see like anything shot on the bearing, then you need to replace it. Um, to pop out these races, you have to um, flip it over and pop it on the opposite side. And what I mean by that, so let's say if we wanted to pop out this side, we need to flip this over and hit it from the back side right here. There should probably be a little indentation. Well, this one doesn't have a little indentation, but you're gonna, there's like a little lip where you can grab right there and you can pop these out. As you can see, that is a good bearing. We just gotta clean it up a little bit and then we'll be fine. Now this one has an inner snap ring right there. And you get some snap ring pliers and do that. I mean, I'm not going to do that. There's no need to. I mean, in my opinion, I think the bearings are good. I already took this for a test drive. And um, I didn't hear any bearing noise. So just so you're aware, um, if you wanted me to make a video on that, well, bring your truck on over and I'll make it. But this one doesn't need it. And we're not going to worry about it. So, yeah. So we'll just put that one back. But I'm going to go ahead and clean this still. Um, just not right now. And then do not put this in dry. And what I mean by put this in dry. 
put some gear oil. You could put like 7590 or 8090, and then just make sure this is not dry. Because if it is dry, well, best believe it's gonna go out really quick. All right, so let's check this out. Uh, we got our seal. The first seal that I got was pretty wrong. So the seal is not called an actual shaft seal. This is actually called a wheel seal. Um, part number, well, here's the actual measurements for that. Part number 710568. There's the dimensions. You'll type that up and then you can find a seal with that. Um, now this is a two-piece seal. So basically, as you can see, when I hold this, you see it spinning? Let me get that so you guys can see this. So that can spin. Um, now from my understanding is that this will lock inside the, the actual hub. So it'll lock in right here, just like that. And then this will slide into there. Now, I gotta figure out a way how to pop that out. Um, you could probably get a Dremel, pop it out. I'm gonna see if I can maybe get something that we can probably hook up right there. Um, we'll get right back to it. So let me see what I can do to um, get some sort of tool so we can figure out some things. All right, so obviously we got to get this out. So I'm going to try to using a pick. And I'm just going to peel it back. And obviously I can see it working. So you can actually get this pick from your auto parts store or Harbor Freight. Let's get it right here. All right. So it wasn't that bad. It's just actually pretty stuck on there pretty well. I'm pretty sure it was leaking all from here. Yeah, definitely leaking all from here. All right, so now that we got that bad boy out, we need to go ahead and clean up our area. Now, soap and water would be the greatest thing to clean it up with, but since we have so much grease, we want to clean up this. Oh, and I'm going to show you we have to check out one more thing too before anything I'm kind of looking at this tube I mean we see a little scarring not scarring it's more like it's not it's not any scratches or anything so if you see something like this this is perfectly fine um, that's more like staining um, usually I would see those in motors when the when the car sat for too long so let's check inside here if we see anything. I'm just looking on the inner side. No, there's no there's no um, damages on that. So this just has staining, so we need to check right there and then right here. Um, yeah, I mean, that's just pretty much normal. Um, we'll probably put like maybe a little light coat of grease on there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up with some brake cleaner. We need to make sure this is all nice and, and dry for our lovely customer. But other than that... And there goes Penny putting her hand. So, you spray on a rag and then basically we're going to get out mostly all the little grease that's in there. Now, I mean, we're really trying to get out most of the grease, but... Obviously, if we're really trying to do that, we're going to be here for a little while. And, I mean, I spent a lot of money on brake cleaner. I would say, like, maybe, like, two cans, if you have a lot of grease like this, would work. Other than that, I didn't stress it out too much. So, um, now at this point, it's time to put everything back together. So, let's go right here. So, we're going to get our brake cleaner. Like I said, I want to clean this up just in case if any debris or water got in this. Um, now, if you really wanted to clean it, you could spray brake cleaner inside here. I'm just trying to get mostly all the sediments during a little exposure time. And we want to clean this up as much as possible. So when we inspect it in the future, we can make sure everything's fine. Um, so 
we're gonna go ahead and get some gear oil just want to make sure this is all nice and clean all right cool that's fine bearings look fine if you see any bearings missing you better look for it all right so I got some uh, gear oil 7590 and then I'm just gonna just spray it right there and then we'll do a little right here and then we're just gonna rotate it around and then let's go ahead and clean up this little outer piece right here too and then we're gonna want to put some actual gear oil All right, so now our seal um, is pretty much one way this is going to go in. Um, let's go ahead and put some grease on here. So just like that. And now we're going to have this. Now we got to hammer this in. I mean, you can even see it in like that. Oops, you guys didn't even see that. Let me go get a hammer. So, as you're um, trying to seat this guy right in, um, you need to make sure it's fully seated. Right now it has a lip. Let me just put this on my hammer. I just don't want to damage the lip. And we're just going to work it. And I'm hitting the actual metal piece. So I'm kind of angling the rag. So if I'm going to hit it up here, I'm angling it like that. I'm angling it like the, the back piece towards me. Um, just so you guys are aware, I'm not hitting on the inside. Because right here, this guy has to spin. If this gets damaged, you're going to leak right out. Um, just so you guys are aware. And then... We need to add some gear oil right here, so forth. All right, so uh, kind of looking at this right there. So it has a little scar. So it looks like the previous person. I'm pretty sure this has been touched before. Because if you look at it, it's pretty rusty. So just so you're aware. Obviously, somebody has been at this. Um, whoops, sorry. So, yeah, someone's been here. Obviously, when you're picking it out like that, obviously, that's not going to happen. Like, the way how I was doing it. But whoever did this before, I mean, obviously, something had to happen. All right. So, anyways, we're going to put some gear oil. We'll put some gear oil right here, right over there. Just let it drip out um obviously it's gonna get a little some on the brake we'll we'll go ahead and um brake clean that out brake clean that out on the bottom all right so now we're gonna go ahead and put in our wheel bearing so let's go ahead and slide it pop it back in now it should just you're gonna spin it in you need to tap it in you gotta make sure we tap this in evenly. Doesn't take a lot of effort. All right, so we're gonna get our wood right here and then we're just gonna hit away, just watch your fingers. All right, there we go. That is fully maxed down. Oh yeah, perfect. Just do that. And then you can see right there. If you look in there, you can see as long as you see all the shiny stuff that's gone, then we're good. Um, and obviously when we counted our rotations, that, that's what's going to help us out. Alright, so now let's get our, our washer. So remember, it's like went in like 12 and a half times. Or we're going to, once we get a little bit more flatter, so 
you're not gonna count it until it actually grips its thread. Now they do sell a special tool for grabbing these, but I think so, but uh, who cares? You can use a little pick. All right, cool, so now we're, we're grabbed on. Let's get our pick. We're gonna do one, two. Now I'm not even gonna count it right there. I'll count it once I get more flush. Let's see where we're at. Uh, I think that should be good. No, it needs to be recessed one more. All right, that's it right there. So I'm recessed one more. So obviously, so we're gonna go one, two, three, four. That's four. And then five. And then this one should go right there and then it should go a little bit more past it so i had to get a bigger pick so right there that's where the other one maxed out so you're gonna actually go like that too spin it just like that and then we're just gonna back it up just a little hairline all right and that's should spin with a little bit of force just because of the new seal and then we're just gonna pop that guy right in there and then we're gonna get this guy make sure our little lip is right in there now this was facing on the inside so make sure that little piece is on the inside just like that and that's pretty much it um, we are ready to put in our axle shaft so before we put in our axle shaft, we need to spray some brake cleaner. I'm gonna use silicone. Um, if you didn't want to use silicone, you could buy the gasket. Um, I'm not gonna stress it on the on that. So just clean up this little inner piece. All right. So um, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and put on our axle nuts, but before we do that, we actually meet, we got to put some Loctite on these guys. Um, there's yellow Loctite, but we're going to use some red. So you can either get your pick, whatever. Um, not necessarily needs to be back here. So you can actually get your pick or you can get a wire brush and go through all these. And then I'm just going to spray these with brake cleaner. Um, if you had a wire brush, you would just clean these all. So far, these all look good. Um, again, I'll just clean them with some brake cleaner just like that so when we put in our new um our new uh loctite it'll just be clean all right cool so we'll let these dry up and then we'll get right back to the video all right so we're gonna get our axle shaft and we'll just stand it up now we're gonna get our brake cleaner I'll pretty much show you this. We're, we're going to clean up the whole shaft. You're going to grab this like a stripper pole. You know, grab it like you want to shake and bake it. So we're going to clean up our whole shaft just in case any debris got on here. And then we're going to clean up this area, the bottom surface, and then we'll clean up up on top. I'm not going to show that right now, but. All right, again, make sure both mating surfaces are cleaned. So I gotta make sure this is all nice and clean because I'm gonna put silicone on it. Now, if you're gonna use the paper gasket, then um, I wouldn't worry about it. All right, so we got a Loctite. I just have all the bolts lined up like this just so I can just, you know, just swing it right over. So just make sure you put all your Loctite. Make sure you shake up that bottle pretty well. You just only need to put a good coat. Just put them on the top and then they'll they'll work them their way up to the bottom. Alright, next step. Right now my silicone thing is actually giving me a little tedious. I gotta do this pretty quick. So let's back up. Um, so we need to put a nice thin coat. So I know this one's pretty pretty shoddy. Actually, technically, we only need to put it on the outside. We got a little. Mom, I'm not getting 
So whatever little grease that you got going, all that stuff needs to go. That's a pretty thick bead. Shouldn't be that thick, but I'm just gonna swing my finger right around and spread it out evenly. All right, just like that. All right, so we have that. Let's clean our fingers. And then there is no right or wrong way to put in your axle shaft. So I believe there's an inner seal too, but I'm not worrying about that. So we're just gonna slide this bad boy right in there. As we get inside towards the end, we actually need to push down on this because if I push it right now, it's stopping. So I could spin it in there. We're going to have a hard time. I got to push down. So I'm going to pull this down and I'm going to push it in. And so right there, it should go in and you're just going to do it until it grips. And then we're just going to spin the rotor or the, the hub itself. And then from there, we're going to probably have to move this up or down pretty much just up just to get it centered. And then we're just going to do that for top or bottom. And we'll just keep doing that. So let's go ahead and get all those bolts in. We just need to start the first initial threads and then the rest I'll, I'll get it with an impact gun. All right, so I'm gonna snug down. I need to get these centered. So you'll start off with one top, one bottom, and you're gonna do this in a pretty much start pattern. So we're gonna go, I should have started right here. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's how we're gonna do that. And then you'll go back over the, the same two. Now, we need to go ahead and inspect this guy, and we need to make sure that we see a bead kind of sticking out. Right there, you don't see it sticking out all the way, but you do see a little bit. So let me back, let me go in there just a little bit. So I just want to make sure you guys see that. And I'll look it over with you. So we are looking good. All right, we are pretty much all said and done on that that's not that bad it's, it's literally you're walking apart literally this should probably be a one hour job obviously it took me a little bit longer because this is not the only thing i'm doing today um if you wanted to you can mark down your your bolts just to make sure so some people you know they would mark it just to make sure that it doesn't Spin it. So if you know these are loosening up, you just go ahead and retighten these. All right. So let's put on our rotor. All right. So we're gonna put on our rotor. Make sure your surface is clean of any debris. So if you laid it flat right here, make sure it's clean. You don't want no debris on there. And then this guy, you're probably gonna scrape up some silicone. Oh no, we didn't. And then just sit that right in there now let's talk about the excessive fluid that came out i mean it's only like i mean it's really not even that much i mean not even maybe one ounce at the most two ounces pretty sure maybe like two ounces came out i mean really again it's not the end of the day you could fill it up with a differential i do have another video on a 3500 dually pretty much the same thing um except this one actually has a socket bolt so all right so now we're going to put in our caliper so let's get this puppy right in there you see my daughter's over here trying to correct me make sure you spread out your pads all right so we got that all spread out 
All right, so we got our Loctite on our bolts too. So I'm gonna start off with the top one. And then we'll go on with the bottom one. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put in our clips. Not that it matters. Um, I mean, they're really not doing anything. And now we're gonna go ahead and put in our um, wheel. All right. Now, if you wanted to tighten down your lug nuts, pretty much the same thing as this. So again, if you wanna tighten these guys down, we're gonna tighten them. I'm gonna snug them in first because we're gonna center the wheel. So we're gonna go one, two to snug, and then we're gonna go back. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then if you have the hub cap, um, pretty much same thing. I mean, this really doesn't matter. All right, that's pretty much a wrap. Um, again, if this video helped you out, give it a thumbs up, comment down below if you have any questions, and hit that subscribe button for more upcoming videos in the future, and thanks for watching.